So let's take a look at that and see if we can get more practice with it. Let's take a look at the fraction 6 eighths. All right, we want to simplify this. And right away, we know that we can divide by 2 because they're both divisible by 2. But let's write down the factors and see if we can just make sure. What are the factors of 6? The factors of 6. So we start thinking, what can multiply together to give us 6? 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 and 5 are not factors. They don't multiply to give me 6. But 6 times 1 is 6. So these are the factors of, of the number 6. What are the factors of that denominator, which is an 8? Right? Well, we know that 1 times 8 is 8, and 2 times 4 is 8. 3 does not divide into 8. 4 times 2 is 8, so that goes there. 5 and 6 and 7 are not factors, but 8 is a factor of 8, because 8 times 1 is 8. So then I look at the common factors. 1 is common, 2 is common, but these others are not common. So actually, the greatest common factor is 2, which is what we already kind of said we could use. But we just want to oftentimes make sure that we're using the greatest common factor so we can do fewer steps to get the answer. 6 eighths. Let's divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. And we think we'll get the answer in one step. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we're telling ourselves that 6 eighths is exactly the same thing as 3 fourths. Let's see if this is true. 6 eighths. All right. So this is 1 eighth. 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, and 6 eighths. I think you can kind of see that that already looks like 3 fourths, but we'll just go ahead and make it official. Here's 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. So we can see that the fraction 3 fourths is exactly the same as the fraction 6 eighths. So these are equivalent, and we were able to get the answer in one step, but only because we divided by the greatest common factor. Um, if we have a problem down the road with more factors, then we can still use them. We just may have to take extra steps to get there. Let's take a look at the fraction 3 twelfths. We want to simplify it, so let's find the factors of both of these guys. What are the factors of the number 3? Well, the number 3 has a factor of 1 and 3. That's it. 1 times 3 is 3. That's the only numbers that multiply to give me 3, so those are the only factors. The factors of the number 12, of course, we're going to have more factors because 12 is a much larger number. So 1 times 12 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 3 is 12, 5 doesn't multiply to give me 12, but 6 times 2 is 12, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and 11, none of those multiply to give me 12, but 12 times 1 is 12. So those are the factors. 1 is a common factor. Uh, 2 that's not a common factor. 3 is a common factor, so that's actually the largest factor that's common to both. These are factors of only the, the bottom uh, number here. The largest common one is that. So if we now then take the fraction 3 twelfths and we simplify it by dividing by the greatest common factor, divide the top by 3, divide the bottom by 3, then we suspect we will get the answer in one step. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 12 divided by 3 is so we're telling ourselves that the fraction 1 fourth is exactly the same as the fraction 3 twelfths. Let's see if this is correct. The fraction 3 twelfths, 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths. Let's turn it like this to make it a little easier to see. And then the fraction 1 fourth is right here as well. You can see that the fraction 1 fourth is exactly the same thing. So again, we were able to get the answer in one step because we divided and simplified the fraction using the greatest common factor. Now, the next problem is going to be a little different. We're going to do the same process, but we're going to see more, I think, powerfully why dividing by the greatest common factor is the shortest path to get to the answer, even when there's multiple paths. Let's take the fraction a little bit bigger, 24, 30 seconds. That's a much larger fraction, but we know that we can simplify this fraction, right? And we know that they're both even numbers, so we can definitely divide top and bottom by 2, um, and we can certainly do that, but let's do the process we've been using so far. Let's take and find the factors of the number 24. What are these factors? Well, 1's a factor. 1 times 24 is 24. 2's a factor because 2 times 12 is 24. 3 is a factor because 3 times 8 is 24, right? 4 is a factor because 4 times 6 is 24. 5 is not a factor. But 6 is a factor because, again, 6 times 4 is 24, right? Now I have to go back on my list here. I guess I'll 
kind of continue there. Uh, seven is not a factor, but eight is a factor because again, eight times three is 24. Nine and 10 and 11 do not divide into 24, but we just said 12 is a factor because again, 12 times two is 24. All of the numbers between 13 and 23, none of those are factors, but 24 is a factor because 24 times one is 24. So those are the factors. Let's find the factors of the number 32. Let's find the factors of 32. All right, one is a factor because one times 32 is 32. Two is a factor because two times 16 is 32. You might not remember that, but if you multiply out two times 16, you'll get 32. Three is not a factor, but four is a factor because eight times four or four times eight is 32. Five and six and seven, none of those are factors, but eight is a factor because eight times four is 32. Now between eight and 16, none of those are factors, but the number 16 is a factor, again, again because 16 times two is 32. All of the numbers above 16 up till 32, none of those are factors, but the number 32 is a factor. So these are all the numbers that will divide evenly into the number 32. Now notice, one is a common factor, two is a common factor, uh, four here is a common factor, eight is also a common factor. Now these at the end, these are not common factors. So the greatest common factor is actually eight. It's the largest number common to both of these lists, but I have other numbers to choose from. I have four, which is common, two, which is common as well. So let's simplify the fraction using the greatest common factor, 24, 30 seconds. Let's divide the top by the greatest common factor, which is eight, and the bottom, again, divide by eight. 24 divided by eight is three, because three times eight is 24, and 32 divided by eight is four, because four times eight is 32. So we're saying that the fraction three-fourths is exactly the same as the fraction 24, 30 seconds. And we got the answer in one step only because we chose the largest common factor, the greatest common factor, to divide by. Let's do this problem again, 24. 32. Honestly, if I were doing this, you know, just for some other problem, I would probably just say, well, they're even numbers. I'm going to divide by two. I know I can divide by two. So let's see what happens. 24 divided by two is 12. 12 times two is 24. 32 divided by two is 16. 16 times two is 32. But notice that this fraction also has even numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, let me just do the whole thing again. I'll divide this by two and I'll divide this by two. What will I get if I divide them both by two? 12 divided by two is six and 16 divided by two is eight. So I get an answer of six eighths. But this fraction is also containing even numbers. So I can then say, well, I'll just do the whole thing again. I'll divide this by two. I'll divide this by two. What will I get? Six divided by two is three and eight divided by two is four. And I get exactly the same answer, three fourths. But you see, the problem is because I didn't divide by the greatest common factor, I had to do the process several times. Notice that um, four is also a factor. I could have divided these by four, but I would have to do another step afterwards to get it down to the final form. What happens is when you divide by the greatest common factor, then you're guaranteeing that you only have to do this step one time to get to the final answer. Either way, you will get to the right place. All right, I really wanted to show you that because I know that when I learned this, I was confused. I was like, oh, it's so much work to get the greatest common factor. The only reason we're doing it is to save time simplifying. But in reality, when I'm simplifying fractions, I'm usually just dividing by two or by three or by four, things that I'm e I know in my mind I can use. And I just know that I may have to do it several times to get to the final answer. All right, let's get a little more practice. 14, 21, 14, 20 firsts. All right, we want to find the greatest common factor of 14. So we'll find factors of 14. What are the factors of 14? Well, one times 14 is 14, and two times seven is 14, so that's a factor. Three, four, five, six, none of those work, but seven times two is 14, and then 14 times one is 14. Those are the only factors. What are the factors of 21? Well, one times 21 is 21, Two is not a factor, but three times seven is 21, and then seven times three is 21, and then 21 times 21 is, I'm sorry, 21 times one is 21. All the numbers in between here, none of those are factors, they don't divide in. So what is the greatest common factor? Seven is the largest number common to both of these lists. So let's take the 14 21st, and let's divide the top by seven and the bottom by seven. 14 divided by seven is two. 
21 divided by seven is three. And so we get an answer of two thirds. That's the final answer. And of course it only took one step because we divided by the greatest common factor. All right, we're pushing to the end of this lesson here. Let's take a look at the fraction 20, 30 fifths. We wanna simplify it using our knowledge of the greatest common factor. Let's find the factors of 20. What are the factors of the number 20? One times 20 is 20. Two times 10 is 20. Three uh, is, does not work, but four times five is 20. And then five times four is 20. Six, seven, eight, nine, none of that works. 10 times two is 20. And then 20 times one is 20. All the numbers in between do not divide in like this. What about 35? This is actually even easier because it's, just, it's, a, you know, it's divisible by five. We know that one is a factor. One times 35 is 35. Five times seven is 35. Seven times five is 35. 35 times one is 35. None of the other numbers in here will divide into 35. So one is a common factor. Two, not a common factor. Five is a common factor. Actually, that is the greatest common factor, five. So we'll take the 20, 35ths, and we will then simplify it by dividing by five. 20 divided by five is four, and 35 divided by five is seven. So the answer is four sevenths. So we're saying that 20 35ths is exactly the same thing as four sevenths, exactly the same thing as four sevenths. All right, we only have one more problem. Get a little more practice with the greatest common factor. Let's take a look at the fraction 15 uh, 24ths. All right, let's take a look at the factors of 15. Well, we know one is a factor. One times 15 is 15. Three times five is 15. Five times three is 15. And 15 times one is 15. None of the other numbers work. Now, what are the factors of 24? We just did this one a second ago. So let's think through it. One times 24 is 24. Two times 12. And then we have three times eight is 24. And then we have six or four times six is 24. We skip over five, six times four is 24. And then eight times three is 24. And then 12 times two is 24. And then 24 times one is 24. All of the numbers in between, they do not, they're not factors. The greatest number here common to both lists is actually three. So the greatest common factor is actually three of that. And so we'll take 15 24ths and we will find the, the or divide by three. 15 divided by three is five and 24 divided by three is eight. So we have an answer of five eighths. That is the final answer. These are equivalent and we got the answer in one step because we're dividing by the greatest common factor. So Wanna call your attention back to this one though. This is, really, this is a really important one. When we simplify fractions, we can divide by any number we want and we will eventually, if we keep simplifying, get to the right answer. But if we find the factors of both numbers and find the greatest common factor and simplify using that one, we get the answer with only one step. So that's what a lot of teachers often tell you to do. And it's really up to you. If you wanna find the greatest common factor and use it, great. If you wanna just divide by two or by three or whatever over and over again, that's fine too. You're gonna to get to the same simplified fraction either way. All right, I'd like you to practice all of these problems yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We will continue building your skills. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.